<clears throat> Welcome to Newman United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Ryan, and I'm so glad to be joining you for this time of worship and celebration today on this first Sunday in Advent. Uh, I want you to know that you are welcomed here no matter who you are or how you come to the space at Newman. We welcome all people. So you are welcomed here no matter your political affiliations, no matter who you love or how you identify, no matter your age, race, immigration status, family situation, faith background, ability. We welcome everyone here at Newman. And more than just welcome you, we invite you to be a part of our church family, to walk with us in the ways of Jesus Christ, the ways of peace, love, justice, mercy, and compassion. Amen? Amen. 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 I have a handful of announcements to share with you all this morning. I'll try to get through them quick. Uh, But coming up this Friday, uh, for First Friday, we are hosting a Christmas open house here in the sanctuary. Uh, We'll have uh, goodies and uh, drinks, warm beverages set up for folks to come in. This is a great event. Tim and Michelle will be leading us in singing some Christmas carols together for a sing-along. That's going to be a fun evening for us all, so we encourage you to come and join members of our community as we uh, open up our doors to everyone. Also, uh, coming up on Saturday, December 2nd at 7 p.m., we are hosting a concert with uh, renowned pianist John Nilsson. Yeah, Mickey's excited for it. <clears throat> John is a, a phenomenal musician, and he's worth seeing. He's worth coming out at night, even if that's not what you usually do. It's worth the effort this time. Uh, we're asking for $15 at the door to help cover John's costs. He's coming down from Portland to the Southern Oregon area, and this helps pay for his, his musicianship and his time as he uh, makes the effort to make this happen for us. Uh, if 15 bucks is too much of an ask for you, don't worry about it. We're not going to turn anyone away for this concert. Okay. <clears throat> also, you'll notice we have a lot of poinsettias up here. Uh, a handful of us made an executive decision when we were decorating the church yesterday that instead of waiting until later in the season to put them out, since we had them, we're going to put them out and enjoy them all of Advent. So uh, you still have uh, until the, uh, today's the last day, I should say, to turn in your poinsettia order form. So if you still want to order one, there is still time to make that happen. There's an insert in the bulletin, and you can add to this uh, beauty that is up here on the chancel during this Advent and Christmas season. Okay. And today is also United Methodist Student Day. So you notice in your bulletins there's this little uh, card insert that tells you a little bit more about what United Methodist Student Day is. It's one of our uh, six United Methodist Special Offering Sundays. And this one is we are raising funds for scholarships for United Methodist students uh, around the United States primarily. Uh, so you, if you want to make a, a contribution to United Methodist Student Day, just write Student Day on the other line on your offering envelope uh, and or on the, the memo line of your check. And one more announcement. Uh, Matthew is still in need of a couple of ushers, particularly for uh, Christmas Eve and uh, New Year's Eve uh, Sundays. So if that is something that you are available for, uh, talk to Matthew, and he would be glad to get you signed up to help usher and greet folks on those days. Okay, I think that's all my announcements. Barbara, you've got one. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. I just first, I have two announcements. The first one is, if you signed up to bring uh, cookies or sweetbreads um, for Friday night, I'll be here from 3.30 to 5.30 Friday afternoon. If you can bring them at that time, that would be perfect. And then they'd be ready over in this corner here for Friday night. So if you signed up, don't forget. And the second one is about Foundry Village. I tell you, you are so generous (laughs) as as a person in giving food to Foundry Village. We had two car loads. I unloaded my car, and then the second one pulled up, and they said, you have another car? (laughs) And we had two turkeys and dressing and enough mashed potatoes and gravies for everyone to have seconds, I think, and uh, two casseroles and three pumpkin pies and an apple pie and cookies. I mean, salad. I just, they were, it was unbelievable. Just so gracious and, and generous. So I thank you. I'm going to give you a hand. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you to all of you who participated in helping out our friends over at Foundry Village. Uh, unless there are any other announcements. Oh, Tim, that's right. Uh, 
I'm uh, Tim Wallace, your music, one of your music directors. Michelle is the other, we co-direct. Um, our drummer, who is normally with us, Sandy Metcalf, is on a Mediterranean cruise with her mom. Lucky for her, she just sent us a text from Greece yesterday. <laughs> and, but um, the purpose of my announcement is that it's not in your bulletin, but we have of this wonderful percussionist with, uh, with us. Love you to welcome him. His name is Steve Sutphin. So thank you so much for that. If any of you are new, by the way, you're wanting to join the Advent Choir that we have rehearsing Wednesdays at 3.30 here in the sanctuary every Wednesday, and the performance will be December 17th. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. And thank you, Tim, for reminding me. Also, if you are new here today, I invite you to fill out one of these welcome cards that are in the back of your pews. Uh, if you've turned that in when the offering plate comes around later in the service, and this will make sure we get your contact information so that we can keep you up to date on all the wonderful things happening here at Newman Yai Methodist Church. With that, I invite you into an attitude of worship. I ask you to stand in body or in spirit for our call. Well, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. You can sit back down. My apologies. <laughs> so, you know, funny enough, before you get going, Tim, uh, Funny enough, I shared this week when I shared the worship with everybody, I said, read it carefully because we're doing things a little bit different during Advent. And there I go right back into my habits of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I invite us to take a couple of deep breaths. Let us enter into a time of worship together. Advent is a season of waiting, a season of anticipation. In our world today, it seems like all we are doing is waiting waiting for a ceasefire, waiting to see what will happen in the next election, waiting for a living wage, waiting for hunger to end, waiting for racial justice, waiting for hope. Jesus calls us in the scriptures telling us to keep alert, to keep awake for you do not know when hope will manifest itself. Hope is the sometimes dim light that guides us forward through the dark, illuminating a way through challenging times and uncertain times. Please stand in body or in spirit for our call to worship. Please join me responsively. We gather in hope, longing for a world free of prejudice. We gather in hope, longing for a world free of violence. We gather in hope, longing for a world free of racism. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Holy One, during this Advent season, prepare our hearts to receive hope. Prepare our hands to serve one another. Prepare our feet to walk with our neighbors. Prepare our minds to be open to your unwavering presence in our lives. We pray this in the name of the one who brings light to the world. Amen. And you can remain standing as we sing hymn number 2091 from the Faith We Sing book, The King of Glory Comes.
Let's do that a little faster. The King of Glory comes a nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee and cities of village, he goes among his people. How about a little, little bit faster? The King of Glory comes and nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Sing that of David, son, our Savior and God. In all of Galilee was never another. The King of Glory comes and nation rejoices. Open. may be seated. For those of you that don't know what the Bible Breakfast Group is, it is a group of, right now, just a, a few men, seven or eight men that meet every Wednesday morning for breakfast, uh, Bible reading, and prayer. And I want to announce again, like I did a, about a year ago, I think it was, that that group is open to anybody that wants to get up at 6.30 in the morning and be here for breakfast at 7. <laughs> We're lighting the first Advent candle today. Today we light the first Advent candle. This is a candle of hope. Its flame reminds us that even in the darkest of times, Hope can be found illuminating the path onward. Our world needs hopeful people. It needs people with the audacity to proclaim that there is a better way, a way that can lead to reconciliation, peace, and liberation for all people. We light this candle as a symbol of our commitment to be a people such as this. I want you to join me in singing the first verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Our first scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from the God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech, in knowledge of every kind, just as the, as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He, he will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the partnership of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I invite you to join me in singing our next hymn, Make Way. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing this together. Make Way. 
Make, make way. way. Make way. Make way. For the king of kings. For the king of kings. Make way. Make way. Make way. Make way. For the king of kings. For the king of kings. Make way. Make way. For the king of kings. Please be seated. If we have any children who would like to come up, I have a brief message to share with y'all. It might just be Jaden today, we'll see. <laughs> Hi, Jaden. Well, Jaden, today we are celebrating the first Sunday in Advent. Do you know what Advent means? You know, I didn't know either. I'm sure there's a really smart Greek word that goes to that, but I didn't look that up before today. I will for next week, though. But Advent, what it means to us is that it is, it is a season of waiting. So even though we have all this Christmassy stuff out, it's not really Christmas yet. Christmas isn't until Christmas Eve. That's when we celebrate the first service of Christmas. So let me ask you this. Are you good at being patient and waiting? <laughs> got, got mom laughing up here. Yeah. Are, are, are you all good at patient and waiting? You can, you can be honest here. Some of, us, some of us are better than others. So what Advent is, is, even though we have all this Christmassy stuff around, we know it's not quite Christmas yet, and we are in a season of being patient and waiting for the birth of Jesus and waiting for that love to be born again in our community. And that's why we have these candles up here. You see, the, the men's breakfast group or the Bible breakfast group, they lit one candle this week, and this is the candle of hope. Next week, we'll light the candle of peace, and then the candle of joy, which is bright pink, and then the candle of love will light on Christmas Eve, a lot or on uh, the fourth Sunday of Advent, and then we'll light the Christ candle on Christmas Eve and the next Sunday after that. So Advent is a season of waiting and being patient. Do you think you can do that? I think so, too. <laughs> Will you all join me in prayer? This is a repeat after me prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for your son Jesus, who shows us peace, hope, love, and joy, and all that he brings to us. Amen. All right, Jane, I know we have uh, Sunday school today for those who want to go out to Sunday school. I believe Pat is leading that this week, right? So, Bob. Pat and who else? And Bob. Okay. Pat and Bob are leading Sunday school today, so you're welcome to go out with them. And if you are a new parent, you are welcome to go to Sunday school for a bit with your child to make sure they are settled and comfortable. Our gospel story today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. 
Then he will send out the angels and gather the elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth and from the end of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his own work, and commands the doorkeeper to keep watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the crack of dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our sermon this week, we are continuing with our, our series on the mile, our, uh, our regional ministry focus set forth by Bishop uh, Cedric Bridgeforth. Uh, our first week, a while back, we were talking about ministry that matters and then itineration and location. And last week, we talked about lay ministry enhancement. And today, we're talking about the E in mile, eliminating racism. So we're going to keep that in mind as we uh, hear this message today. Will you all pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, it wouldn't be Advent without an apocalyptic text. In lectionary-based churches like ours, Advent always starts with an apocalyptic theme of some kind, with visions of darkness and warnings and judgment. In our gospel story today, we just read that it says the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from the heavens. It's just the thing we need to get us into the Christmas spirit, isn't it? You know, apocalyptic literature is actually one of my favorite genres of writing in the Bible. The, the fantastical imagery has a way of getting our attention, of making us pause for a second and wonder, what the heck is going on here? This kind of literature, this apocalyptic literature, it's found throughout the Bible. Uh, the book of Daniel, the prophets Joel and Zechariah, the revelation of John, and of course sections of our Gospels like our text today from Mark. And when many of us hear that word apocalypse, I would bet that we're thinking of, you know, the end times or perhaps that popular book series Left Behind or even movies like Apocalypse Now. However, that's not the case when we're reading our Bibles. The word apocalypse is not about the end of the world. It actually comes from the Greek word apocalyptian, which means to uncover or to reveal. So in the Bible, this apocalyptic literature is not about foreshadowing end times or predicting the future or anything like that. It's about revealing or an uncovering of a greater or deeper truth. It's a literary technique that's used to capture our attention and make us think deeper. It's used to reveal something new to us in a poetic way. So knowing this, it makes perfect sense that we'd begin Advent with Apocalypse. Advent, after all, is the revealing of God enfleshed in the person of Jesus of Nazareth and what that means for our world. Advent is about ushering in a new kingdom, a new way of being in the world. Advent is a season of anticipating apocalypse, anticipating change, a great revealing or an uncovering of love. In the text today, Jesus says, But about that day or hour, no one Be aware. Keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. And that's the hard part about this text. Because we do not know when the time will come, when God's reign will be fully realized. We know there's a long way to go before we reach God's vision of peace and justice and love for all. Yet we are so eager for it. Amen? We are eager for a world free of violence. We're eager for a world free of racism and bigotry, of homelessness. We're eager for a world where everyone has what they need to thrive. 
But eagerness doesn't always translate to hope, does it? If anything, knowing we have so much work ahead of us can make us feel perhaps hopeless at times. Like there's no way that we'll be able to reach everything we want in our lifetimes. There's no way we're going to reach full racial justice and reconciliation in the United States in our lifetimes. But we need to be cautious. Because when faced with daunting and seemingly impossible tasks, like eliminating racism, it's easy to look at that challenge and think it's just too much for us to handle. We just don't have the capacity. And we need to be cautious because this way of thinking is loaded with privilege. Because the vast majority of us in this room are white. And it's possible for us to look at a problem like racism and think, well, there's no way that we can solve that, so we're not going to give it our full effort and attention. And I'm reminded of the parable of the Good Samaritan. So yes, I'm going to bring the parable of the Good Samaritan back for a third week in a row. We've heard that the last two Sundays, the priest and the Levite, they went over to the other side of the road when they encountered the the man who was injured by robbers laying in the ditch. And the Samaritan went into the ditch and directly helped the man, sacrificing his time, his money, and his reputation. And then Jesus asks, which of these do you suppose was a neighbor to the man in need? So I want to ask a different question today. So who in this story was the United Methodist? I don't think we're like the priests or the Levites. Maybe at our worst we are. We don't generally pass problems by without acknowledging them at least. But I'm also not convinced that we're always the Samaritans either. Maybe at our best we are. I think especially when it comes to racism, us well-meaning, often liberal white folks are the ones who walk by the ditch and we, we notice the man needing help. And we probably look around at one another and say things like, gosh, somebody really needs to do something. Or, gee, I wish there was something that we could do. Y'all, we are really, really good at doing ditch-adjacent ministry. And as our bishop says, if you can't say amen, say ouch. We can all live our lives without worrying about our race and how it might affect our lives because most of us in this room are white. We don't feel that our lives are at risk when we get pulled over by the Imagine how that might feel to the neighbor who's black or brown. To see all these well-meaning white folks just live in life. Now imagine how maybe that might feel disingenuous. Imagine how disingenuous that ditch-adjacent ministry looks. When you're down in that ditch, it's almost easier to get over the folks who walked over to the other side of the road because at least you know who they are. But the folks who stand there, looking at your situation, talking amongst themselves, that's almost worse. It's not worse, but it's almost worse. Because we're so close to actually doing something. But even the most noble and righteous of intentions do little to help the man who's in the ditch. We can have the best intentions when it comes to racism, but our intentions don't fix the problem. Ditch adjacent ministry is just that. It's adjacent to doing something that is helpful. Again, if you can't say amen, say ouch. Jesus tells us to be aware, to keep alert, because we don't know when God will show up. And I don't think that Jesus is talking about keeping alert for the heavens opening up and sounds of trumpets in the distance and stallions and lightning. If we know anything from Jesus in his ministry... It's that God shows up in the small, the insignificant, the understated, and the most unlikely of ways. Like a man in a ditch. Like a person of color wrongfully imprisoned. Like an immigrant profiled by a potential landlord. Like a black dad having to teach his sons how to not look threatening to white people. Getting real with ourselves about racism is not going to be an easy task. We have to start by changing the culture and changing ourselves. We need to identify the ways in which we participate in racist systems and perpetuate racist ideas and expectations. And you may think to yourself, well, I'm not a racist. And that might be true. 
However, as our bishop said, as long as you are a participant in any institution with roots in these United States of America, you have anti-racism work to do. You can claim I'm not racist and still have anti-racism work to do. We cannot expect our neighbors of color to take the lead on this work. It's not their responsibility. Anti-racism work is our work to do. We need to own it. We need to do the work. This first Sunday in Advent is about hope. And in a world overwhelmed with racism, it can be hard to find that hope. But Jesus calls us to keep awake and alert, to keep an eye out for God in our midst. In the Christmas story, God is revealed and uncovered to the world, not in powerful, or not as a powerful and almighty being, not as a, a king with a crown, but as an infant, a vulnerable child born of a low-income family who after his birth had to flee to a foreign land as a refugee to avoid the tyranny of a man with too much power. Today, God is still revealed to us in unexpected ways. We will not find God alone in the halls of Congress or even behind a presidential seal. God will be found where God is always found, among the oppressed, the marginalized, the ones whose skin color makes life more difficult for them. So keep alert. Stay awake. Keep an eye out for God, because he just might be over there in that damn ditch. Amen. I want you to join me in singing our hymn of response to the unsettled world. It is number 2183 in the small hymnal. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable as we sing this together. may be seated. We now come to our time of prayers of the people. If you have a prayer request that you would like to share, just uh, raise your hand and I'll be sure to repeat it for everyone to hear. Oh, beloveds, who are we praying for today? Barbara? Yeah, what was her first name again? Uh, Roberta Payne. Yeah, prayers for Barbara's friend, Roberta Payne, who had uh, uh, both of her legs broken, and she's in the hospital. 
one leg two places, and she's in the hospital now recovering. So God in your love, hear our prayers. Others. Yeah. Yeah, prayers for a friend, Alan Bartlett, who had a, a serious heart attack recently and is struggling with a number of other health issues that are complicating matters. So prayers for healing and, and prayers for his uh, medical team as well. God in your love. Yeah. Your prayers. Matthew? Joy and Hector. Joy at COVID-19 this week, and she's recovering well from the equal replacement. Uh, and Hector is Yeah, I'll start with a prayer of thanksgiving for uh, Gina, who had an ankle replacement and is doing well and recovering well. God in your love, hear our prayer. And, and a, a prayer uh, as the, the, the accident that Matthew's uncle was in. Uh, yeah, the tow truck driver who was the other party in that accident also lost their lives. So, God in your love, hear our prayer. Uh, Glenda, then we'll go to Tim. Yeah, prayers for Anita Snyder and her family and her loved ones as she had passed away recently. God in your love, yeah. her prayers. Tim? Prayers for Charlene Burgess, who can now uh, accept visitors. She's at the Regents facility, used to be Fairview, up on Fairview. She's uh, recovering from the auto accident. Her, her yeah, continued prayers for, for Char Burgess. She's still continuing to recover. She's at Rogue Regency now and, and would love uh, guests and visitors. And now that she's back in Grants Pass, it's a bit easier for us to do that. So. God in your love, hear our prayers. Suzanne. Yes, a prayer of joy and thanksgiving for all the folks who helped make this sanctuary so beautiful yesterday. Suzanne was there. Uh, my mom was there. Tim and Michelle were there. Uh, what was it? Yeah, Jill was there. Robin was there. Andre was there. So. And uh, Jean and David. David, yeah. Dave Church, yeah. So, thank you all. God in your love. Mickey, did you have one? Just um, hopefully I'm making the right decision. Yeah, a prayer for guidance as Mickey is hoping that she's making the right decisions. God in your love. <clears throat> Our prayers. Will you join me in an attitude of prayer? God, we come before you today with prayers some that are easy and some that are hard. The ones that we've shared aloud in this room and the ones that we carry within our hearts that are maybe too hard to share aloud. God, we pray for your guidance, for your strength, for your hope and your healing for all those in need around the world. We ask that your love be in our hearts and that your hand of blessing be upon us now and forever. We pray all this and so much more saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hope is alive at Newman United Methodist Church. Hope is alive at Newman when we feed hundreds of people through our food pantry. Hope is alive at Newman when we treat our unhoused neighbors with digni dignity and respect. Hope is alive at Newman when LGBTQ plus people are given spiritual sanctuary. Hope is alive at Newman when ordinary people like you give of their time, talents, and gifts to, work to, do, to the work of love in our community. When the offering plate comes around, you are invited to make a gift and or consider the ways you feel called to give to your church, your family, and your community. 
You may also make a financial gift to the church by visiting our website and clicking on the Give tab or by using the Church Connect app. And as your treasurer, we really appreciate your generosity. We deeply thank you. Um, I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing our doxology today. And this is different than usual, so don't get caught off guard by it. But we, know, we all know the tune. Loving God, we give you thanks for these gifts which have been so generously given. We ask your blessing be poured upon them that they may be used to bring hope and healing to your world. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for our next hymn. We are closing our services throughout the Advent season with Christmas carols, even though it's not quite Christmas yet. We've got to get ourselves in the mood, that's right. So our, our closing carol today is, O Come, All Ye Faithful, verses 1 through 3. Oh, 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 oh. 
Beloved, receive this blessing. May God be with you in all that you do, giving you the courage to go over to the ditch, to move beyond that ditch-adjacent ministry to doing some actually good, good, hard work. Work that might make us uncomfortable, work that might make us feel uneasy, or work that we may not feel fully equipped to do. But God equips us nevertheless. So go into the world, go in hope to heal the world. Amen. I want you to reach out your hands in signs of love and blessing towards one another as we sing together our sung benediction. You all are invited to join us across the way for some coffee and goodies. You've heard the word of God. Now go in peace and serve the Lord.